I'm going to share a brief history lesson before we get into the meditation because I think it's important that you be aware of this information and I want to make sure it doesn't get forgotten in time. Of course, you can click directly to the meditation at any time. As we take our tour of ancient wisdom, there's a man worth noting and I want to tell you about him because his scientific teachings very neatly coincide with the highest teachings of ancient wisdom. His name was Walter Russell. And he's a virtually unknown American artist. He was born in 1871 and passed nearly 60 years ago in 1963. He won numerous awards for his paintings. He composed several pieces of critically acclaimed music and was commissioned as the official sculpture to capture the likeness of many famous people. Perhaps the most iconic statue that he created was the, the bust of Mark Twain, which you probably know better than you would know Walter Russell. But people who know Walter Russell today know him most, not for his artwork, but for his theories of spirals and light. He was a self-taught scientist, but his theories were never seriously considered by the scientific community, and that's really unfortunate. As an example, he envisioned the periodic table of elements as a spiral. He created a nine octave spiral and predicted through this spiral design the existence of two new elements, which were eventually discovered exactly as he had predicted. He believed and he set out to prove through mathematical diagrams that the universe is constructed from units of light. Now to paraphrase this, because it's a little bit more complicated, he explained light as if it was a cell and a cell has a thick outer boundary on the outside and as you move toward the center, it becomes less and less dense until you get to the center, where it is just light. He calls it the zero point, the nothingness of light, the infinity of light that's inside each of these light cells. And these light cells are the fundamental building blocks of the universe. These little bits of light are the infinite building blocks of creation. Of course, you'll understand this immediately if you study ancient wisdom. In China, thousands of years ago, they called these elemental units of light energy, they called them qi, Q-I or C-H-I. In Chinese, qi means the circulating life force. Qi is all around us. We draw it in from the earth. It's in the foods we eat. And most importantly, it's in the air that we breathe all the time. And the deeper we breathe, the more alive we are with chi. We are made of chi. We're surrounded by chi and everything is chi. Little bits of light. Walter Russell explained that everything we see is a collection of these light cells and they group themselves together based on energetic patterns. So your energetic body, the structure of your energy is what holds your chi in place. You are constructed of countless infinite little bits of light and each bit of light has a tiny little spot of infinity right in the middle of the cell. We are light. Now in outer space there's no gravity, it's almost a perfect vacuum. So matter is spread very thin and Walter Russell postulated that in the vacuum of space the cells of light are very, very, very large. But in our gravitational physical reality he postulated that these cells are extremely small and densely packed. So regardless of the size of the cell, it always looks the same. It has a thick outer boundary, gradually decreasing in density until it reaches a zero point, the infinity of light. They all have the same basic shape, light on the inside and manifestation at the edges. Now, for those of you who are following along with me and studying ancient wisdom, you can see that this is yet another way to express the polarity of our existence, positive and negative, male and female, yin and yang, inner and outer. Everything, including us, has a zero point of inner stillness and balance and an outer manifestation which is always changing. And he suggested that manifestation takes place through an undulating, never-ending wave that begins at the center of the cell, it begins at the zero point, it begins at that point of light, and it undulates out in all directions to the edge. All things begin in light and manifest outwardly from there. 
as these countless bits of light vibrate, what is it that guides their frequency? What's causing their vibration? And the answer, said Walter Russell, was mind. Walter Russell said, thought is the cause behind all things. In the cycle of mind, I said, mind controls reality and reality conforms to mind. The Buddha said, with our thoughts, we make our world. Now, Walter Russell also had a very interesting theory on abundance that we should try to understand. Since the zero point of this light cell is infinite, everything exists within that zero point. There's never a need to look outside yourself for anything. The abundance you seek is within if you can find that infinite zero point. Walter Russell said, we all have the same promise of the unlimited help of the universal intelligence that guides all things. If we want it, we only have to plug into it. Most people who study Walter Russell are fascinated by his drawings. They're filled with spirals and polarities and numbers and equations. But those mathematical proofs were intended for scientists. They're not really important to you. Walter Russell brought his ideas to a full circle by suggesting that each of us, through meditation, can move our awareness to this zero point. But you don't just go to the center of light consciousness without a plan. He urged all of us to make full use of our cosmic potential. In his own words, this is what he said. At this center point of light, you become deeply aware that you are an interpreter of universal consciousness. Know that you have the potential to create anything, to co-create incredible things, because you are a tool of the universe and are ultimately one with everything. Walter Russell. So that's who you are. You're an infinite being of light. And ancient masters of China, India, and Tibet have known this for thousands of years and have lived their lives in inner radiance. You're a being of light. You have a center point. So now you're going to put your awareness directly on your inner zero point, on that one spot of infinity that exists within you. And from this one point, you can begin to master your own abilities. And everyone can do this. I know you can do it because the zero point is part of who you are. Light is at the center of each of us. And you're going to see this in a matter of minutes. If you've been doing the light consciousness meditation, then you're familiar with the Vedic five body exercise. So that's exactly what we're going to use here also. So relax as I slowly take you directly to this point of infinite light that lies within you. And then I'm going to leave you there to your own thoughts. And my suggestion is that you come back here often. So right now, I want you to close your eyes and relax comfortably. You may be standing, sitting, or even lying down to sleep. Enjoy this meditation now, but also carry it with you throughout the day. You may be typing at your computer, or walking the dog, or driving, or talking with a group of people, or maybe even just watching television. At any moment, you can shift your awareness back to this zero-point meditation. You can shift your awareness to light consciousness at any time. Now, in other videos, and you should take your time and watch them all, I explain that inner development, developing your inner self, takes different skills than we've been taught in the outer world. So, without going through all the details, I need you to be fully alert I want you to feel balanced and relaxed so you can start to sense and then master your inner abilities. So relax completely wherever you are. Take a few deep breaths and take just a minute to feel your balance. And I want you to feel yourself rooted to the earth. Let all your weight sink down and feel yourself rooted deep into the earth. Picture a man standing with his two feet like the prongs of a plug where your feet and your energy is plugged deep into the magnetic depths of the earth. Let 
all your weight sink down into the earth. Feel yourself magnetically rooted to the earth. Now, allow your consciousness to scan your physical body. Like a ring of energy, like an MRI machine, slowly scan your body. Let this ring of energy go around, starting from your head, all the way slowly, slowly, slowly. And wherever it touches, let everything sink. As this ring of light moves down your body, whatever it touches melts like chocolate in the hot sun until all that's left is your skeleton to hold you up. Release all physical tension. Then, if you can, release all the tension from your skeleton. Take five slow, diaphragmatic breaths and completely relax. Let go of the idea that you have to control your body. Just let it go. And in this deep state of relaxation, let your consciousness slowly rise from your physical body to your emotional body, completely melting your emotions and releasing all emotional tension in your body. Now, raise your consciousness to your energetic body and feel the energy coursing and spiraling through you and around your body. Feel the flow of energy through the soles of your feet, spiraling up your legs and spiraling up through your spine and out of the crown of your head. Feel the energy vibrating, alive and thriving. Energy spirals through you and it spirals in the space around you. And energy emanates from your body and surrounds you like a gentle magnetic cloud that is always with you. And it moves when you move. Keep your eyes closed, but imagine moving your hands slowly and see how the energy radiates from every pore of your body and it surrounds you. Your energy is alive and vibrant and you are now rooted to the earth. Now, leave your energy body behind and raise your awareness to mind and release all thoughts. Mind surrounds you. Now, again, rise your consciousness above mind into light consciousness. And with your physical eyes closed, you're now using your third eye to look out over an endless space around you. You are an infinite being of light above mind, like an airplane looking down on the top of the clouds. Mind is an endless ocean beneath you. You are above mind, in light. And from light consciousness, above mind, you can see the truth that mind is infinite. It really has no boundaries. It has no edges. The closer you get to light consciousness, the closer you get to your zero point, whatever you want to call it, the closer you get to this infinite spot within you, the more infinite you become. At this moment, you are at the zero point of an infinitely large cell. The ancient truth is this, you are an infinite being of light. And the longer you stay in this awareness, the more infinite your life becomes. Now imagine very, very far in the distance, millions of miles away, is the edge of your cell. 
the edge of your light cell. That's the outer world waiting for you at the outer border of this cell. And as long as you remain balanced in light consciousness, that reality stays far away. But when you lose the perspective of light consciousness, reality rushes in. So from this zero point, you're able to effortlessly hold the outer world far away. And at the border of the cell of light, way out in the distance, reality is pressing to get into your awareness. But the outer world will obey your effortless command and will stay far away. Now here's why I'm spending so much time getting you to this awareness. Society is completely stuck in the outer world, so it's never been explained to you. You are a being of light. You can get yourself unstuck from the outer world. You can live in light consciousness. It's part of who you are. In this infinite space around you, you are sovereign. You're a queen of creation or a king of creation, a prince of abundance. Your sovereignty can never be taken away from you. You have always had the power and authority to control your own thoughts, to hold the outer world at bay. No thoughts. Mind perfectly still, like infinitely calm water on all horizons. You and you alone control this inner world. And the more time you spend here, you're going to find, through your, at least in my own experience, there are no voices here that are telling you what to think. It's only you. There are no celestial beings flying around trying to communicate with you from other solar systems and other worlds, at least in my own experience. It's just you. You and you alone are responsible for your own thoughts. Now, the Buddha found this spot. He found this zero spot, this light consciousness, and stayed here for years. There was no reason to leave this inner kingdom. Undisturbed mind. He became so thin that his bones showed through his skin. And then finally, he went out into the world and he explained a middle way, a balance of deep inner meditation and mental control, as you are experiencing right now, while at the same time practicing peaceful compassion in all his affairs. See mind around you, undisturbed. You can place any thought in your mind right now and there is no force that will oppose your thoughts as they ripple out and manifest in reality. Relax in this zero point and look out over a vast ocean of mind. Let go and stop trying to control every detail in your life. Just let go. It will all work out. Now. Imagine a million miles away, the edge where outer reality waits for you, there's a series of doors. All the doors are closed because remember, nothing from the outside can enter. You are sovereign in this infinite stillness. The more doors you open, the more you give up your sovereignty. So for example, just an example, imagine one of those doors a million miles away is marked Facebook and you open that door and all that garbage flows into your world. Another door is marked news and you watch the news and all that garbage flows into your world. Another door is marked fear and all that negativity flows into your world. Imagine doors marked greed, hate, ignorance, power, anger. All these ideas lie outside your world and they cannot come into your mind on their own accord. Only you can let them in. Now, most of you, when I said greed, hate, ignorance, you said, well, I don't have those. That's great. You've shut the door on those things. You are sovereign. 
greed, hate, ignorance cannot enter your mind without your permission. But there are countless doors, each holding an idea or streams of experience. And it's within your power to keep those doors closed. But just as importantly, you can open the doors that you choose. You can open your life to people, new habits, health, great ideas, leaders, teachers, coaches. All of these will have a positive influence on you. You can open your mind to any idea. You are sovereign. Now, most people have no choice. They're not aware of this zero point, so they live their lives at the outer edges, and their lives are overwhelmed with stress and worry and fear and unhappiness. But now you have a choice to return to your light consciousness, to shut the door on the ideas and the inputs that you don't want to occupy your mind, and you can cultivate and open your doors to the ideals that will make your life happier and healthier. Now, as a child, you had no power, so the outer world was all there was. Some of your experiences were loving and gentle. Other experiences were hurtful and frightening. You didn't have a center point. You were lost in the outer world. And just at the time when you were most vulnerable, at the time when you most needed a, a center point, you were the most vulnerable. You didn't have the power to choose. You had no sovereignty. And all of those vibrations and experiences have stayed with you in your subconscious mind your entire life. And they are what keep you attached to the outer world, even today. As a child, you were at the mercy of the people and the things around you. But you do not have to continue to live in limitation. You can claim your birthright. You can claim your light consciousness. And you can balance yourself from within while the world spins around you. In the cycle of mind, I said, the world is chaotic right now, but it has always been so. Learn to master your thoughts, and you will live in peace, despite the turbulence around you. You see, even in the midst of outer activity, with your eyes wide open, you can still choose to remain balanced. Throughout the day, bring yourself back to this zero-point awareness of sovereignty and light and inner peace. So silence your thoughts right now and enjoy the stillness around you. Mind undisturbed. And from the vantage point of light consciousness, you have all the time in the world. You are an infinite being of light. You need nothing. The outer world does not pull you. Your attachments are a million miles away, locked behind a door. In the language of the secret of the golden flower, the ancient Chinese text, you are now in what they would call a formless state, a state of non-attachment, living in light. As I said, the Buddha experienced this timeless inner peace and he silently meditated for many years. He hesitated. He didn't want to agree to sit down with his disciples and teach them. So when he finally came up with this middle way and he decided to sit down and teach, this is what he said. Those who are able to observe their mind will be liberated. Those who are unable to observe their mind will forever be under bondage. The mind is everything. With our thoughts, we make our world. In light consciousness, you are above mind. And this releases you from the bonds of limitation. You are free from the constant pull of the outer world. Observe the absolute stillness of your mind. Experience the peace of light consciousness that surrounds you. You are a celestial being of light, above time, above universes, apart from everything, yet part of everything. 
there are no limits and you can take your thoughts. You can see this for yourself. You can take your thoughts in any direction. You're free to think in any terms. You're no longer bound to repeat the old ways of thinking. You're no longer trapped in unwanted negative habits. You're no longer polluted by the negativity that consumes the outer world. You are pure and infinite. Your next thought belongs to you alone. You are the perfect creator of your next thought, and you always have been. But now, you are and always will be beyond the illusion. In the deepest part of your inner world, there is perfect stillness, and it is just you. And that brings us to the next important stage in your inner development. Since there are no guidelines or rules in the inner world, there's no map, so anything is possible, everything is possible. So from this vantage point of light consciousness, you have a blank slate. You can think anything you want. So what are the best thoughts you should be thinking? Now, most people know nothing of this inner world, and they live in a world where all the doors are wide open and they're immersed in the chaos of the outer world. They have no structure to their thoughts. They have no sovereignty over their lives. They're simply responding to what's happening in the outer world. They have no moral compass to guide them to the right values and principles. They are, in fact, not in control of their own future. They are swept by the tides of the outer world. But now you know your true sovereignty, and you can protect your sovereignty. You can choose. So what thoughts do you want to put in your mind, knowing that whatever thoughts you choose today create the future you're going to live tomorrow? So as you look out over the vast stillness of mind, you see it's an empty field with no markings or guideposts. So we have to locate true north and then create our own path to get there. To help visualize this path toward true north, I want you to imagine right in front of you, a series of stepping stones that are lined up directly with a compass that points to your true north. These stepping stones are the thoughts and ideals that you choose to put in your mind. Thoughts and ideals that you will live by. Thoughts that you purposely choose to guide your life. And so, in another video, we will explore a guided thought matrix, the highest and best thoughts you can think, and I'll introduce you to the idea of this thought matrix. So until then, stay here in light consciousness as long as you like, and keep practicing this meditation until mind fully adopts this higher perspective of light consciousness.